All right, so the quiz did not become available submission-wise. Some of you emailed it to me, yeah. phenomenal. Some of you had questions, not wonderful, but understandable after talking to people. So here's the deal. I've reopened it until tonight at midnight. So if you submitted it, I printed it and graded it. If you want to keep that grade, you can. I'm talking to Juan and Nick and Ben. If you want to rework it and resubmit it, you can do that after we have talked about it to make sure everyone, does that make sense? Yeah. So I'll just give them back to you. Or if you're happy with your grade and you just want to move on, you can do that too, either way. So there was some confusion on, this is the cross section for both number one and number two. It's a Doug fir column and this is the cross section. So most Doug fir columns are gonna be rectangular. This one happens to be a trapezoid. So that's the first thing we need to clarify. It is five foot long. So it's like a tall thing that has a cross section of that. Does that help? What? Huh? It's five foot long. It's five foot long, and this is the cross section. Remember what a cross section is, Ben? Oh, shoot. It's five foot long. Okay. And I'm sorry. <laughs> that is the cross section. All right. I thought you meant the cross section. Five yeah. Five, so and it's loaded with so 10 kips. 30 right? I, I, so I, I, does that make sense now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you might want to, I mean, you could fix yeah. your one problem that you have. This is just the inertia of this cross section, right? I just want the inertia of this thing, which is actually difficult. So don't think that it's super easy. But use all your resources out there. You can use the book. It does have a half trapezoid, this thing right here. But these are mirror image. So it's going to work for finding the location of this centroid. But there is no equation for inertia. You so, can do it by pieces, two triangles and a rectangle. That's how you would do it, formula-wise. You can try and look a formula up. Just be careful, because I did. I looked a formula up and actually used it. And then I used a calculator, an online calculator, because all that shit's available too, right? And I checked my formula versus the online calculator, right? You can use all those resources. When you get an online quiz, you the world is your oyster, but I don't understand that saying. It makes no sense. So would you say using all our resources, hey, can I see yours? You no, you can't use wait, each other. Not resource that right? resource. My God. <laughs> Sites, he mucked it up. You don't want to yeah. see this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yep. Good. It talks about a little bit, but there's not, like you said, there's not an uh, equation for. The yeah, there's no equation for inertia for that shape. You could do inertia by pieces. That's how we did it in class two triangles and a rectangle. It's not the end of the world, but you do got to do the transfer formula. The equation you find is going to be complicated too. So you can't make a mistake in there either. So I'm okay, however you want to go about it. Okay, good. Questions? All right, till tonight. So I changed. I changed. There is a submission area now, so that's good. Um, I, I don't know that I put it in there. Did I put it here? Oh, yeah, quiz two. Uh, I'll make it available, though. How's that? This is an old one. Yes. Submit. This might even have like submissions or something. Oh no, it doesn't. All right, so it's available. Uh, questions on the homework? You did chapter 10, number 11, chapter 11, one and two. Mm -hmm. I just want to go over the calculations on the chapter 11 questions. I don't feel like I found even so in the. Uh, Okay. The ratio. Number one or number two? The second one? Well, honestly, let's just do both. But... All right. So number one says a two inch diameter 1020 steel rod is 10 foot long, right? Okay. Am I reading the right one? Under an applied load, the rod elongates. It gets longer by 0.48. Well, remember that strain is equal to what? Yeah, deformation over the original. So 
the first part says compute the axial strain in the bar. So that's this. So that should be the 0. 0.48 over, got to use the same unit, 120 inches. Okay. And then for point B, it says if the transverse deformation of the rod is 0. 0.0024. So transverse, what's that mean? Yeah, the cross sectional, the cross section is this circle. So that means this circle changed 0. 0.0024. Okay. So it says calculate Poisson's ratio. What was Poisson's ratio equal to? Axial divided by axial what? Wait, wait, no, it's um it's change divided by axial, right? Poisson's ratio is Transverse over strain over axial strain. Yes. Okay. So we have axial. That's this, the 0. 0.48 divided by 120. What is the transverse? Strain. It's the change, right? 0, 0, 0024 over 2. Two inches. The original length of the cross section oh, is okay. two inches. The change of the cross section is 0. 0.0024 inches. So that would be the transverse. This would be the axial. And then we should be able to calculate a Poisson's ratio. Yep. What'd you get? Poisson's ratio? 0. 0.3. 0. 0.3? Which kind of makes sense with the book. The book's like Right in that pocket, 0. 0.3, 0. 0.35. What different material? 2.5. You got 2.5? I did this for the book. No, no, the book. Oh, the book. Yeah. For 836? Uh, I, I think it's 3.5. But it could be 2.5. I don't have that one memorized for sure. 2.6. Uh, 0. 0.25. I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's just coming up different for this loading condition and this test piece. And the other it one doesn't, the, it won't come up the same. But the actual is uh four thousand like an inch. Okay. So for All the right. ratio I've got uh point zero zero two one or one two. Well, what'd you get for axial strength? Axial strength I got point zero zero four. What anybody else get axial strength? Does it go yeah. more than that? Point zero zero four? No. Okay. Zero, zero, 004 and what do we get for transverse? Um, zero, 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 one, two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then Poisson's is just that divided by that. Point Good, good. All right, number two. Number two is harder, a little yeah, bit harder. It's a little bit harder. I have to read it two or three times in order to. Yeah, it. yeah, exactly. Number two says a rectangular 836 steel bar, two by six in cross section, subjected to an axial tensile load 300,000. Got that. The proportional limit of the steel is 34. So when they give you proportional limit, Right. Here's the graph for steel, stress strain graph. Right. This is the yield. We use that a lot, but sometimes designer will use the proportional limit. And that's where the straight line stops. So it's a straight line from here to here, and it stops right there. That's it's super close to the yield. Typically, thirty-four thousand is close to thirty-six, right? But some designers will use thirty-four. So this one says proportional limit is thirty-four. Compute the change in the transverse point six dimension. So let's write a few equations. 
strain in the transverse is equal to delta in the transverse, length in the transverse. So right there is what we're looking for, I think, right? Let's just say compute the change. Yeah, compute the change. That's what we're looking for in the cross section, right? The thing that relates axial change to cross-sectional change is Poisson's ratio, this equation. Were we given the material? 836? What's Poisson's ratio for 836? 0.25? So I'm going to put that in because that's no longer a variable, 0.25, right? If we can compute the axial strain, which we can, because this is just the change over L, and this is just the change over L, right? Because that equals that, and that equals that. So this one you want to find, this is a known. This is our unknown the transverse change, this is just the beginning diameter. So we have all the pieces, we just have to compute all the unknowns. What's the original length? Six inches. Of the axial? Or of the, the did, they, did they give us the length? No. Nope, no. okay. Now what? Since we can't find this, we don't have the length, we can't get this. There's another equation that has this in it. It's E equals stress over strain, and that's an axial strain. So this is where we have to like, oh, we have to start searching for equations that have axial strain, because we need it, right? We want to put it in here. If we have axial strain, we know the diameter is, or the length is six, not diameter, the length is six, then we can get this, because we know Poisson's ratio. So, to compute axial strain, what's that equal? equals the stress divided by E, if I just solve for this, right? These switch places. Can we calculate the stress? P over A, right? Yep. And can we look up E? Yeah. Yeah, so we can get axial strain this way. That's why they gave us this proportional limit thing. That's the stress, proportional limit. Right? Or we can calculate it. We should calculate it. 300,000 divided by 12, the area. All right, I'm going to keep going. Axial strain equals, I can write it out, 300,000 uh, yep, pounds divided by 2 times 6 divided by, because that's stress, and then what's E? 30 million? 30 million. 30 million. What do we get for axial strength? Point zero 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 eight three 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 inches per inch. So that's this. Now we have the point two five. We have this. We know the starting length of six inches. We just don't know how much it changes. That thing. So that equation becomes point two five equals. 
the change, I'm gonna write a little six so we remind ourselves. And then So that's the change over the original, that's axial strain that we got from the calculated stress. That's Poisson's ratio from the material. So the change in the six should be zero zero one two five. Anybody else get that number? Oh, I mean, yeah, that's that. Oh no, on, on your calculation, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Got. Good. good. No, I'm thinking of all my. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this one was complicated because you had to jump back and forth between formulas, so you had to first like see that Poisson's ratio is strain over strain, and then to get axial strain, it's like oh. We don't know anything about what's going on along this axis. We don't know delta. So, I mean, there is another way to go about it. You could have calculated delta and then calculated a strain that way, right? Delta equals PL over AE, you could have done that. But that was another way to go about it. So, extra information, number one. Um, they probably wanted us to check the stress level, right, and make sure it's under the proportional limit before we can do any of this. So, what was the stress limit? It was 300,000 and 12 divide. Yeah, so it's 25,000 under the proportional limit. So, really, we should check that stress first. Um, that's why they gave it to us. It doesn't turn me on. It's the, it rarely the book rarely does that, but I'll do it all the time to you. I'm going to give you stuff you don't need because that's what you're going to have. You're going to have a whole book of information that you don't need, um, and you just got to pick your way through it. So that was a tough one. So it's not. I mean, you know. 100,000 is not a lot, but the six is changing in size. It's good. Better now? Yeah. We'll do a few of them. Yeah. But this is kind of the game that we start to play where we're going to have multiple equations. We have this E equation. We have this Poisson's ratio equation. And then, of course, we have stress equation. And then we have the strain individual equations. Um, it starts to all get like a big blur of equations that we have to figure out how to apply them. The key is to write the equation that has your unknown in it. Like where does that show up? That shows up here in Poisson's ratio. Anytime the problem asks about what's going on in the cross section, that's Poisson's ratio, right? If it's just wanting to know what's going on along the axis, that's not Poisson's ratio. They don't need it. All right. Or is there one more? No. We don't need to look at chapter 10 one, right? Easy peasy. Ah. Gina goes first. Copper and toughness. 
And you can't, you guys can't get long winded or we're going to run out of time, just so you know. Where's the pile up? I, I, thought, I thought it was like there. going everywhere, man. Some of that is already well, created. Like chapter 10, chapter 10, chapter 11 of that assignment. Oh, okay, so so one step. This is upgraded. Different class. Nice. Under the bus. No, right. What do you know about copper, Gina? Well, as the atomic number 29 is a reddish orange metallic color, and I take on these properties and these also go along with the pros of it, but it has high electrical conductivity, which means it wants to pick up the one more cold current. And it's high ductility. It means that like it's has the ability to deform permanently before it breaks. So yes it does. Well, it's definitely suitable for where when a material needs to bend, what but like not break. And you know, it's used in wire and like sheet metal and stuff. Yep. Um good. it's a good heat conductor. And it's corrosion resistant, meaning that it can withstand like groundwater and presence of salt and like SA particles. So absolutely. It goes along with the biofouling resistance. Which is like accumulation of microorganisms like algae and small um, microorganisms on wet surfaces um, it, that can cause structural deformities and stuff. And it has good machine ability, which is just, it requires little power to like cut it. Yep, it's exactly like right. That. And produces a smooth finish that minimizes wear on other tools and such. And it's not magnetic. Um, mm, very good. Copper is not very strong, but it is very tough, which kind of sounds like it doesn't make sense. But so what's toughness? So toughness is okay. <laughs> <Everybody's out. laughs> Strength. Okay, there's a lot of other materials that are stronger, but it's tough because it has a high like the like the the elasticity. Yeah. It's bigger than most so it can has a higher elasticity before it yields right yield that's right than others yep and so i looked at the book properties and it has a density of 550 pcf which pcf is pounds per cubic foot and modulus of electricity and elasticity of 15 million psi tends to yield 40,000 psi before the permanent deformation. Right. And the ultimate strength, the tensile, is 55,000 psi, and shear strength is 38,000. All right. Do you have an example of toughness? Oh. I know I'm cutting you off. You're doing good, really good. You're thorough. Maybe wow. too thorough. No, it's good. Did you uh, did you come up with an example of toughness? Example of toughness. Yeah. Um, uh, so the property you're supposed to explain with an example of toughness. I can help you. So some materials, when you whack them with a hammer, they'll be brittle and they'll crack immediately, right? So a material that's tough, you can whack it with a hammer, it'll dent, but it won't crack. I know, but you just didn't like say, yeah, okay, yeah. good. Like bend no, over. you hit all the material yeah. properties, but whacking it with a hammer would be a good example, yeah. right? Which is kind of different than what we think of toughness typically, because like if I whack something with a hammer and it dents, I'm thinking that's not that tough, but it's not cracking, right? And actually the material is still copper. When I whack steel with a hammer, if the hammer's big enough, It'll actually have little cracks and you just compress those molecules and now it's no longer what it used to be. It's elasticity is shot, right? Copper, when you whack it with a hammer, it's still super elastic. It's like, that's why we like do a lot of 
pounding into shape for copper. So good job. Nice job, Gina. You got anything else you want to add? Oh, like cons. Yeah. But okay. Yeah, why do we not like copper? It's electromagnetic interference, which means copper produces uh, it can interfere with the signal and have an impact on safety when the connection is not right. aligned. But, but if you were worried about like aliens reading your brain, you could put a copper hat on. That could be a yes. that could be a <laughs> that could be a pro. Um, so there aren't very good when it can form exact amounts of electrical charges. Yeah. Uh, if when using like automotive parts or semiconductors, you know, offer the stability that's needed for it. Yeah. Is it expensive or cheap? It is more expensive than aluminum, but I guess it's it's obviously a better material and it's heavier also than aluminum and it's. Is extracting it sometimes can, I guess, be harmful to you, but yeah. yeah. All right, good, excellent, well done. Ben, yes. tell me about pros and cons of concrete. Okay. What do we like about it? What do we not like about it? So concrete is extremely, but comparatively durable. Uh, these are the pros, where it uh, also follows uh, being a very long lasting material. And she has various applications like bridges, roads, yep. like structures, yep. around places, and it'll break easily. But unless uh, going to the ponds, you like, for example, if you bike with a hammer, it does have a tendency to crack. Yep. And uh, it takes a long time, a long period of time to preparate to a uh, proper operation. Uh, yeah. Install something. So, for improving tensile strength, you would have to uh, reinforce the concrete yep. before you pour it in with free bar or some other metal mesh or steel bars. That's to, right. Uh, to the standards. Uh, yep. For, uh, yep. Um, yeah, it's a major structural material that uh, offers a great resilience against many hazards such as. Burning up, burning down by fire doesn't burn down. Right. It That's exactly when, right. You know, and uh, uh, it won't rot, it won't warp shape or be eaten away by anything. And like I said, it can be. Uh, yeah, I like it. Very big in its life extension. Yep. Very good. I also had a little grab here. I thought it would come up there. If it was not. I have a little uh, stress and strain graph over here uh, comparing the, the yield and the yield uh, strain and stress for steel and concrete. So, um, like you know, when you go up, it's a pretty vertical, pretty vertical for steel. Yep. Then the yield, and then, yep. And then it fails. Yep. For concrete, it's way lower. Right. Because the more stress you apply, the more strain it gets because it's very brittle and it's something like like this could be steel right this yeah. could be concrete exactly yep exactly. so it literally takes and no literally time. if it was the same scale it would be like this yeah right it's because a, there's no not a lot of deformation in the concrete it is a little bit elastic but not as much not very much yeah exactly yeah it's, it's, it's uh elasticity is 1.5 psi which in comparison to wood it has 3.5 psi and uh, structural steel has uh, 0.9 psi. Yeah. So it's not elastic. Way metal, different. But right. It is used for various applications. Absolutely. All right. Tell us what resilience is. Resilience is being, being able to withstand a lot of pressure and a lot of uh, uh, environmental changes. Like heating and cooling. Yeah. Got an example? Uh, it's okay if you don't. No? I got one for you. So a rubber band, right? And you, you take a rubber band, you got two pounds on it. And you put two pounds on it, and you let go of it. How long do you think you could do that with a rubber band? For like ever. <laughs> I mean, this for a rubber band is no problem. It is super resilient to loading and unloading. A paper clip, two pounds, like this, bending it. How long do you think it'll last? 
Yeah, like four or five bends, done. Not resilient to loading and unloading at all. So resilience, like just resistance to loading and unloading, loading and unloading, very resilient. All right, great. Samuel's not, oh, what else? You got more? I want to hear. Yeah. Um, when uh, they do demolition on concrete buildings or concrete structures, yep. they are uh, down cycle of concrete. They're only able to use, reuse 20% of the concrete that's demolished. So it's a reusable and recyclable material. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. It's very good. It's cheap. Uh, compared to anything else that you want to put down that has any of those characteristics, concrete, super cheap. Probably the biggest problem with concrete is we have to make it, right? We have to mix it. And anytime we have humans do anything, we can muck it up. So we get a lot of mixed failures. Samuel's just in time. How, Samuel, you're up. He's like, what are we doing? Did you know you have a presentation? Yeah, all right. Pros and cons of wood. Are you ready or do you want me to? Jump to Evan. Give you a breath. Okay. Are you ready, Evan? Okay. Let's jump past Evan. We'll go to Kevin. I did not know we were doing presentations. You didn't know we were doing presentations? We were doing oh, presentations. man. Titanium and stiffness. That was a tough one. I know. That's a good one. All right. You got plastics? I do. All right. Go for it. All right. The, the origin that I um, Googled and researched. Uh, plastic was uh, accidentally discovered by this uh, chemist, a uh, German chemist. Uh, uh, his name was Christian Spombing in 1846. And he came up with a word, uh, plastic, which is a Greek word, which means to mold. Okay. Um, I also found um, in different websites that the, uh, the meaning is. Um, to shape or to do figures, which is the same. What's the original word? Plast plasticos. Plasticos. Okay. Cool. So Pro pros and cons. Pros and cons. Um, there is a lot of use for it. Electricity is depending. Oh, I have 48 types of plastics. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot and, uh, of different plastics. The, one of the most common ones is ABS. Um, pros would be that it's uh, inexpensive. Yep. Depending the type of plastic that you're talking about. Right. Because the composite plastic, those are really expensive. Yep. So, but reality, overall, pro would be that it's inexpensive, water resistant. Uh, on this chart that I found, uh, they even had the, uh, a 24 hour submerged plastic in water and the absorption. Yeah. So the absorption is. Anyway. Super good. Yeah. So for the ABS, which is one of the most common plastics, it's only uh, 0 0.3, uh, which I don't know exactly. Oh, for sand. So yeah, super small. Uh, zero, uh, uh, 0 0.3% of, of, uh, of, of absorption of water. Yeah. Um, Comps is that they, depending on the type of, uh, of uh, uh, yeah, so, the um that uh, depending on the type of uh, plastic that we're talking about, uh, it, it can be brittle or, or easy to break due to the composition of, of the yep. material itself, the plastic. Um, but overall, uh, there are more pros and actually cons. Good, excellent. Cheap or expensive? So, Depends. Depending yep. on what you want. <laughs> Got it. Easy to shape. It is easy to change. Oh, something else also. It is uh, completely clear uh, on the original state. Yeah. And then can be pigment and yeah. any colors that you want. Strong or weak? Compared to steel. Let's compare everything to steel. Depending on the type of plastic. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, because uh, I, this one even has the elasticity that the shard that I found. Yeah. For, for the 48 uh, plastic, different plastics, some of them. That is basically it's like the ABS, which is the most common one. It's a uh, three hundred and four thousand uh, psi the flexibility. Okay. Uh, but there are some of them that are unbreakable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Very good. Uh, PFA um, says no break point. 
So I don't know what they exactly what they mean with that. Yeah, that's pretty unusual, I would say. But yeah. <laughs> uh, what about what about elasticity? Elasticity. Uh, uh, that's what I was talking about. The the, the most, most common one. Yeah. Oh, also, um, this one, which a lot of people don't know, the Dupont, the Dupont uh, uh, polymine. That one is four hundred and fifty thousand uh, psi flexibility. That's crazy. Yep, that's, that's the, big. <laughs> uh, one of the most common also is. Uh, Did you get samples? I want to see them. No, I did oh, not. Darn. Okay. The centric, well, ever uh, I'm kidding. I was going to talk the centric glass. Most people know it as a plexiglass. Oh yeah, that one is really brittle. And yeah, so you super brittle. Yep. Yeah. Did you do the material property of elasticity? I did not. Okay. What do you think it is? Elasticity. Yeah, it's ability to stretch. I mean, but that's not materials that ability to stretch before deforming. Yep. yep. So a rubber band has very high elasticity, right? But Titanium this, has no elasticity. For this, would be that that would depend on the plastic that you choose. Because absolutely, because for sure. So many. Yep. Nice job, right? All right, uh, one. Cast iron, pros and cons. Uh, I said cast iron is a name for metal alloys. That includes uh, it's iron mixed with carbon yep. and some silicon. Yep. And that that gives you cast iron. The the cast irons they have similar. Um, they got similar properties generally, but some cast irons are better some jobs than others. So they'll make cast irons for different types of things. Uh, what's what's good about it? The cast iron is generally pretty good under compression. So yep. the, uh, in like England, there's this place in England where they built a bridge completely out of cast iron. Yep. The 1780s. Yep. And all the trussing is below the bridge. It's all made of uh, cast iron. And that puts most of that in compression. compression. Yeah. So the big thing is compression, right? Not tensile loading and definitely not bending. But like trusses are all either in compression or tension. So if you have, if you can build it so everything's in compression, then cast iron looks great. It's no good at bending. Oops, I'm taking your thunder away. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Keep going. But <laughs> the big con of cast iron uh, in general is that it, it's not good under any kind of tension. So, like, yeah. you can take a cast piece of cast iron, like, say there's a piece of cast iron here, and you put enough force on it, it's just going to snap. Yep. It's not going to bend or anything. Exactly. Uh, That's so, exactly right. But and that's that's also hard because like uh, you can't do as many things with cast iron as good with like steel because it's yep. it just snapping from it being so brittle. Yep. But it's also cheaper to make cast iron than steel, so for some things, uh, cast iron is just more yep. than steel. It's also oh. easier. I saw that it was easier to cast than steel. I don't know if that's true. It is very much easier to cast, and we cast it a lot. So um, we it's kind of called a junk metal. Like if you just need a cheap part, cast iron's a way to go. It's not going to get loaded too much. It's just just kind of junk metal. It's not easy to machine. It does terrible machining. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, that's a lot of imper a lot, a lot of imperfections. Yeah. Like yeah. Stuff. Yep. Con, that's exactly right. Big con all this is that uh, after machining it, if you leave it outside of the environment, next day it will be rusted. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That was another con. Unless you do plug it in. All right. What about you had a brittleness as your material property? Yeah. So uh, brittleness, it kind of just uh, 
if you put a load on something that's brittle, it, it'll uh, keep going up its uh, stress strain curve. And yep. Blow up. Yep. Stable. Exactly right. So Doesn't deflect real well. No, no plastic feet. What time are you in here, Heinz? Okay. We'll probably go right up until. All right. No, you're fine. I just didn't want to, I wanted to make sure I wasn't wrong. So I was like, what? <laughs> All right. You got anything else on brittleness? It's not really going to at all. Yeah. Like when we did the tensile test? Yeah. Nope. It's just going to fail. Yep. Brindless is pretty straightforward. It doesn't take a lot of descriptions. Like we kind of get it. So good. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> nice job, Juan. Nick, what do you have? Steel. Carbon steel. You got the easiest one. Good luck. Pros and cons. Um, well, there's basically three main types of carbon steel. There's low carbon, medium carbon, and high carbon steel. Yep. Um, the most common is the medium, because it's the low carbon steels are uh, weaker and softer, but they're easier to weld. And the harder ones, so the higher carbon steels, they're like way stronger. Like they withstand a lot of forging for decommission. Yep. But it's super brittle. Yep. Um, so it doesn't bend like at all, and uh, the elasticity. Of it is, I didn't write that down, but the tensile strength of a harder steel 1080 yep. is 1400 psi or 140,000 psi. Sorry. Right. And um, I mean, that's compared to the lower ones of 36, right? Yeah. yeah so <laughs> substantially higher. Um, carbon steel can be up to 20% stronger than typical mild steel making it an excellent material for high load applications. But once you get to the higher threshold of carbon, it just like is super, super brittle breaks. And it's yep. not horribly expensive, but still expensive. Like yep. It's not cheap. Um, Trade-offs everywhere for that. I have um, analysis of three of the medium carbon steel. Um, 4140, 1060, and 1045, all are in like the 0.3% to 0.5% carbon. Um, I have the Brunel hardness scale because mm. <laughs> it was like a really good number. Surface hardness, yeah. Yeah, and that's like the if you hit it with the hand, yep. type of thing for the most. Um, 4140, which is the um, strongest tensile. Mm -hmm. One out of the three uh, has a 197 BHN, 1060, which has an 89,000 PSI, has a 183 BHN, and 1045 has, um, what I found interesting was the modulus of elasticity is only one number, 29,000 PSI. Yeah. So it just. Straight down the line. Yeah. yeah. But um, it has 163 BHN, so it's significantly less tough. Um, Okay, that's good. Did you do strength? Um, the strength of it are all yield, and then I have tensile. Yeah. Um, yield ten sixty in the medium range is seventy thousand three hundred psi. Right. Um, Did you do the material property? Material property of strength. No. Okay. So I don't know how it, that's no, it's tough. It's in the book. Like if you read it, and it really all it's going to tell you is. Strength is a combination of properties of a material. So it's not just one property of a material. So, you know, strength for this application could be a different strength for that application, which I mean, makes sense. So many different yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's only a few listed. So, yeah. what do we like about it? Um, it's super strong. Yeah. Like, and it's um, when it's low carbon really really easy to work with yep um it's often found in like cars yep like cars and it, pretty much anything that you can use any material you can use steel yep. for it's just going to be probably more expensive typically um, and then what do we not like about it? well expensive yep for the harder like if, if you have anything that you need something 
for high strength. For high strength, because you don't want to spend too much. Yeah. And then if you want something for super high strength, super high carbon steel is just going to break. Yeah. How is it with corrosion? Um, pretty good. Not bad. Huh? Unless you're at the coast, and then you got to yeah. paint that bridge every year. Just keep painting it. Start at one end, paint it, start again. It doesn't. I don't think. It's all right, Nick, anything else? You good. Nice job. Samuel, you ready? You're short on time, so. We're short on time. Okay, go ahead. Um, What's the ISO impact? What? ISO, uh, I-Z-O-D impact test. ISO, it's like a Brunel hardness test. Okay. It might be repetitive though. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. And what is the ASTM test? American Society of Mechanical Engineers, ASTM, American Society AS. Testing? testing materials. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a institute that tests materials and then gives us the data. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot to tell you that I have all that information. Oh, there's a lot of it there. All right, Samuel, you got a couple minutes. Sorry. Well, yes, it is. It has low thermal conductivity and nail screws don't naturally weaken it. It's true. I love it. Uh, not electrically conductive. And, uh, but uh, the cons are that is uh, there's a lot of uh, it varies, but the uh, properties of it vary quite a lot by the species. Yeah. And it's also uh, dimensionally unstable. Like it could, like, that's exactly and, right. Uh, or expand. As it dries, it gets smaller. Yep. Because uh, it is uh, natural materials. So that's why I think the moisture. Effective. Yep. And uh, it can crack also. Yep. And yes, yeah, it's, it's combustible, so it's, uh, you gotta be careful where you where you put it. Yeah. Uh, and it's also the sensitive the natural material is uh, susceptible to the thermite that could be uh, could be destroyed by. Insects. Yep. And to rot. Easy to, easy to work when with. It, when it gets wet, it gets Yep. Is it easy to work with or hard to work with? Pretty, pretty. Easy. Very easy to work with. Yep. All right. Anything else? We're out of time. Well, not, not economical because uh, it's, uh, it's not, not as malleable as metal. Right. Because yeah, it deforms. If you put, if you put pressure on it, 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 it 